So the other day I was playing around with this new AI assistant. It should be super smart, right? So I asked a pretty simple question about some economic tariffs and it shot back this confident answer from 2024 because yeah, his brain basically stopped learning then. And that wasn't a failure of intelligence, that was a failure of data. And that is the biggest bottleneck in AI right now. Welcome back to Gem Gem Crypto, my name is Jemmy and today we're diving into how we are running out of the right kind of view for AI and how some seriously cool decentralized networks are trying to rebuild AI's most valuable resource. Okay, so here's the deal. AI models, especially those fancy LLMs, are like incredibly hungry students. They learn by reading, and I mean reading everything. We've basically scrapped Wikipedia, vacuumed up Reddit, mined every public text we could find. In other words, we are running out of new quality public text data to train these giant models by as early as 2026, maybe 2028, if we are lucky. And here's the kicker, just throwing some random text at them, like terabytes of amateur fiction barely moves the needle, and the easy data is gone. We're hitting diminishing returns. So we have this paradox, AI is getting more powerful, but the good food it needs to grow is getting scarcer. And when something valuable becomes scarce, its price and importance skyrocket. And people love to say data is the new oil, but it's more complicated than that. Oil is, well, oil, data is dynamic, is contextual, and where it comes from matter a lot. So think about the really valuable data out there. For example, stuff like hospital records, financial histories, or very specific research and development from companies. It's all locked away in silos, hidden from view. So our main focus today is how we can get those quality AI data. But before we start, a huge shout out to Caleb and Brown, a premium crypto brokerage service. Thinking back on my crypto journey, I really wish I had a personalized service to help me navigate the complexities of crypto trading. Caleb and Brown offers exactly that. They are a crypto brokerage service where you can easily get in touch with a professional broker via email or even set up a call if you want more in-depth advice on market trends, transferring funds or on-ramping or off-ramping your crypto. It's not just about buying or selling crypto, it's about having someone who genuinely supports you along the way. With Caleb and Brown, you can contact your broker anytime, as often as you like, at no extra charge. Plus, they provide a secure custodian cold storage solution for your assets. If you want to get the same level of personalized service, sign up using the link below and create your own Caleb and Brown account today. Now, let's dive back into how the centralized networks are bringing data back into the hands of the people. Then, there's the net new data. You can't teach a robot how to navigate your messy living room just by reading Reddit posts. For AI to really understand the world as it is right now, it needs a live feed, not just a history book. Finally, the expert annotated data. In fields like medicine and law, you can't just rely on anyone to label the data. A cat photo is simple, but a nuanced legal precedent or medical diagnosis is much more complex. It takes experts to get it right, and that process is both slow and expensive. So what I'm saying here is that the era of just scrapping the public internet for free gold is ending. And guess who knows this? The big Web2 platforms. Reddit signed a 16 million deal with Google for its data. X or Twitter charges a ton for API access. OpenAI is paying publishers millions for their archives. And the people who actually created that data like me and you, we get nothing back. So the deal is, it's an extractive system, but what if we could flip that? This is where crypto and decentralized networks come into play with three main strategies for rebuilding data ownership from the ground up. First up, decentralized web scrapping. Think projects like Grass. The idea is pretty genius. You install a little app and your computer using your idle internet bandwidth helps scrap the public web. So instead of one big company doing all that, 
is a massive network of users. Grass built on Solana got over 2 million active nodes pretty fast. Together, they pull in tons of data daily, which then gets bundled and sold to AI companies. The cool part is that they plan to share revenue back with the people running the node. It's like turning public web data into a community-owned resource. Strategy number two is to decentralize where you get the data from. This is where it gets really interesting. So take Google's capture, for example. When you're selecting those images of a fire hydrant, you're actually training their AI, but you don't get anything in return. So projects like Pondi AI changes that. With Pondi AI, you can do the same thing, annotating data, but this time you get rewarded for your work. It's a decentralized platform that lets you contribute to AI and earn from it. Recently, Pundit AI joined the NVIDIA Inception program, which gives them access to advanced tech and support to scale the solutions. This partnership helps them make AI more accessible and open to everyone. So if you want to try out taking some images and start any rewards, you can find the whitelist link in the description box below. Moving on to strategy number three, synthetic data. If real-world data is scarce or too private, why not make it up? Well, not exactly make it up, but generate it artificially. So synthetic data works by copying real-world patterns without using personal info. This is a big deal for privacy because you can create huge data sets fast, fill in missing data, and customize it to fit what an AI model needs. Imagine training robots for simulations that haven't happened yet. Platforms like Drea use AI networks to create custom data sets. For example, if you need a million biology questions, Drea's AI team gets to work generating, checking, and formatting the data. So it's like having a data factory whenever you need it. But synthetic data isn't perfect. If it's too far from reality, it might cause data hallucinations or even amplify biases. Because it's generated by computer algorithms, right? There's a risk that a single mistake could lead to data multiplication and inaccurate results. So you might be thinking, okay, so far so good, but how does crypto help with the whole AI dataset scene? Well, for one, it's its financial incentives. Collecting and verifying data is hard work. Tokens can reward people across a network of these contributions. You help out, you earn. It's like crowdfunding the creation of valuable datasets. Number two is its on-chain provenance nature. Blockchains can create a verifiable record of who contributed what, when, and under what terms. This is crucial for tracking where the data came from, then, smart contracts could potentially automate royalties. If your data helps train a successful AI, you could get a car. Still early days on making that perfectly traceable, but the foundation is there. Number three is a style governed data commons. Tokens can also give contributors voting rights. So the community, the people providing data, can help decide how it's used, who gets access, and at what price. The data becomes a community resource, not just a corporate one. In other words, with the crossover of crypto and AI, you don't necessarily need to build the next chat GPT, but rather you need to position your data where it solves a real problem for someone willing to pay for it. We are facing a data crunch for AI, especially for high quality, trustworthy data, but the centralized networks using crypto tools are offering new ways to scrape it and even create it from scratch. The networks that can secure credible, high fidelity data now will be the ones dictating how fast AI models learn, how well they perform, and who captures the value in the future. So it is a foundational shift, a slow burn as some call it, but the direction feels pretty clear. I know the AI that regular users like you and me have come across are mostly just LLMs like JetGPT and DeepSeek, but what if they are incorporated into humanoid robots? What would that look like? So if you're curious to learn more about this, check out this video right here.